Welcome everyone to ETF12 week three matchup against the top one team listed in the tables against the lower team in the table. It's Danger Dogs versus Reason Gaming. I'm Peter. With me on the mic is Ryushi and on the camera is Onkaya. So Ryushi, are you looking forward to this game? I think it it's got the potential to be pretty good. You know, we just saw dogs obviously on the mainstream um, facing off against Epsilon. They didn't do too well, only managing to, spoiler alert, get themselves one round in two maps. But Reason are a little bit sort of cushier opponents. We we could have a chance to get an upset. Um, this is, is this the week two match or is this the week three match? I forget. This is the w week three, I think. I so think we last, see Gully Watch and Viaduct, right? Uh, yes. Right. So, yeah, I mean, Viaduct always got a chance to play some upsets, you know. Um, it's, it's massively different style to 5CP, so I, I, you know, I'm a little bit excited for this match. I, I, I think it could play well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think Saini is usually the scout for Danger Dogs, but not today. Today was a racist edge. I think they've replaced him. Oh, just straight up. According to their ETF12 thing, he's been moved to sub, and Razor's Edge is now main. Oh, all right. Well, I was kind of looking forward to it. They, they should have waited one more week, I think. Because yeah. the viaduct is a good time to have a perma sniper. That is but, Cini's strongest point. Surely you'd, you'd think bringing him on his best map would be a good idea. Maybe they'll play him, actually. I mean, he's still on the roster. But yeah, they could definitely I didn't do it. But him. I've also seen Razor's Edge play sniper, and he is a, a, a fearsome sniper himself. So, you know, if he has a really good day, he's like he could make cause some upsets, I think. And also the rest of the, the Danger Dog team is a very good team. And especially, like, Calho is a very underrated roamer. And I think uh, Kratos has been playing really, really well so far in the season. They've only played uh, one match this season against LEGO prior to this, where they lost. But it was a pretty good game. I think it wasn't, like, the closest of games. But they, I think they put on a pretty good show. And... I, I could definitely see Danger Dogs taking at least a fair amount of rounds. I, I'm going to go ahead and say they get like at least three rounds on Gully. That's my bold prediction. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, yeah, you, you, you said it, Calho is, you think, underrated. I think he's actually fantastic. I, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't underrate him at all. I, th I, th I think, you know, um, last time I saw Calho was when he was playing for TLR and he was absolutely amazing when he was playing for them so I think you know he's taken a bit of time to warm up I was watching the Epsi game earlier and he seemed to be doing pretty well against them and that's not 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 a you know easy achievement to do well against Epsi so I, I think it's gonna be good also a bit of chance for redemption for Zub maybe after that heartbreak last um, season when uh, Stark broke the news that Zub had been kicked on TFTV forums before uh, Cadus had had the chance to tell Zub that's 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 pretty mean. Pretty mean, Cadis. Pretty mean, Stark. And of course, now Cadis and Stark on the same team against Zub. Zub's got a, such a chance for redemption here. Yeah, you reckon they? You reckon it's personal? I, like, I, I, I think out it's for gotta vengeance. be. Absolutely. Zub's Zub's gonna be hungry for blood here. Gonna hunt himself some Brits. That's what it is. I think you're right. It's <laughs> <laughs> definitely gonna bring a whole different spin on it. If you can get a little bit of personal animosity into the mix. I could throw people off. Um, do we know who the Romer is for reason this game? Um, because Shadowburn's in the game, but usually it's rising. Uh, but I guess Shadowburn is playing. He's also in the mumble chat, as far as I can see. So is that confirmed? I have no confirmation for you. Um, there's nothing according to the ETF World match page, so no mercs have been asked for. But I'm guessing, seeing as someone just read it up, that they are playing with Shadowburn, and it has been allowed. Um, I'm gonna say that's an upgrade to Rising. Rising is pretty damn good, but I mean Shadowburn, Shadowburn, you know. Yeah, especially since Rising is still a bit rusty, I'd say. You know, he, he was active, uh, inactive for quite a while. Yeah, a couple so, of seasons at least. Yeah, so you know, even though he's still very, very good, he, he's he's a bit rusty, I think, and he hasn't been that flashy and and just overall good, I'd say, as he he was when he quit. So he's just getting warmed up. And Shadowburn has just been getting better and better. But he is on the Serpent roster. So it, it might throw a reason off that they have a Merc, even if it is a very good Merc. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it could throw them off. It could play really well. Um, we will have to see. But game has started, so 
Um, B, yeah, take, take, take me to middle. Introduce me. Whatever. All right, all right, all right. Um, I'm gonna gonna follow Cadus. He's always fast on these mids. He's going to choke. So he'll be spamming the big door. You can always get a ton of damage down here. He's actually done a fair bit of damage already. But so far, both teams have been often take their own side, and a single sword that goes in gets air shotted, gets air shot down, and then taken down by Cadus' stickies. That was uh, Calvo getting taken down very, very quickly, but it's still one for one in terms of, uh, of players. And so far, it actually looks like dogs are coming out slightly ahead, even though they're, they're a player down. Like, they have w much better positioning, but there's a soldier behind them that they have to deal with. That's Shadowburn. He's in onto the demo now. He gets piped once, and then Razor's Edge quickly follows up. And now the dog player is oh! slowly cleaning up. <laughs> what? Kratos has the... Is that allowed? That's legal? Yeah. I guess it is. Uh <laughs> So Kratos gets that kill and Skeed drops at the same second. Oh man, this mid fight is just echoing on and on. Frags are still happening as Kratos goes down. Now Captain getting traded by a respawning Razor's Edge. Or has Razor's Edge just been survived throughout this whole thing? I think he's actually yeah, survived. I think he has. And now uh, he finally uh, comes out on top. Jesus. Yeah, Kalo managed to come in for like a second go on the same mid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we, we, we end up finishing our, our first uh, middle a minute and a half into the round. Um, and it looks like the Oaks have come out on top. They do hold the middle at the moment, but it is actually it's equal Ubers. Razor's Edge has gone back and picked up forward spawn and switched himself onto that sniper. So we'll see if he's able to get himself a pick from wherever he is. Dogs are actually holding pretty passively here, trying to let Reason push in and see if they can get that pick onto the head of Permzilla, who is rotating his way towards Choke, maybe trying to peek in, maybe cap letting Captain go forward. They know they've got a sniper now. They heard the shot ring out but didn't connect with anything. So, Raisin, yeah, Raisin? Reason are going to be playing a little bit more defensive now that they know that there's the chance that Permzilla could drop. And they're obviously Yeah, Kelly actually that. goes in uh, and trades with Shadowburn and Victor. <laughs> that was uh, the classic Roma fight where they both uh, see each other and uh, they both kill each other. That's how about 80% of all Roma fights end. It's pretty funny. It's one of my favorite things in T2. <laughs> it's just so reliable. Razor Z actually has a lot of space in Victor. Right now to work with, uh, he's peeking and like he's just looking at scouts and eventually, you know, he'll hit one of these shots. You'd think at least. Uh, uh. <laughs> no luck so far. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't hit the the, the scouts. So Cadus tries his luck to peek around the corner. You know, put putting his head in danger doesn't really seem like the best strat to me, but. I guess we, we still fa see ourselves stalemated. Both Romers now having respawned, so maybe it's up to the Romers to make a play. Um, but again, nothing really happening at the moment. Reason content to just sit back and wait, I guess. Yeah, like, um, I can definitely see why dogs are not really doing anything. They have a sniper, so, you know, when you have a sniper, you can just take sweet time and just wait for him to get a pick. And actually, it looks like uh, Starkey's running back to spawn to go sniper himself. Actually, he goes spy. Very, very interesting. Um, so, like, this is a, a pretty smart move. You know, because this is such a stalemate that the dog dog's team has like no interest of breaking at all. Well, dogs are not gonna be expecting it as well as well. They they've seen the fact that there's no off classes, so it's gonna be interesting. Slark goes in through the drop down, see if he can find anyone. Still invisible, so he's in for free onto that midpoint. Has spotted out the medic now, so he knows exactly where everything's going. He's called out the push. He's called out the fact that dogs are playing really close to big door, so there's gonna be a soldier jumping in to try and distract. He's gonna I think here we go. He's going for the uncloak oh, now. Tries to get in two. onto Skeet. Gets healed oh, by Skeet. And just there, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three players just all turn them in at the same time. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so dogs now they find themselves with a, with a one man advantage. Take down one of the scouts. They're going to try and work their way in through this big door. Try and create a little bit more space for Razor's Edge to try and get a shot off on anyone. Cadis is going to have to get taken down here really early. And that is not what Reason want. With no demo to defend this point, it's going to be pretty tough. Even though they have a slightly better Uber, there's going to be an Uber scout chasing out Skeets. Can Skeets dodge long enough behind. for this like, Uber to fade? Cause a ton of stuff. Wow, yeah. And now Reason, actually, they lose a couple of players. Haffy went super deep onto Skeets, didn't manage to get the frag. And now, actually, it's going to be a lot better for dogs. Because Kratos has rotated around from that uh, choke area, managing to find a lot of damage onto that soldier of Shadowburn there. But Shadowburn jumps up, gets health pack, and now starts dueling other players. There's going to be a scout in to help him. Dogs, I think, are managing to get this point. But Reason do not want to give it up for free here. Definitely not. Um, probably more worrisome for him, uh, Reason is that the, the Uber is slightly behind, and I think dogs know this, because they, they saw, you know, they popped Uber first, 
like quite a bit, got some picks, and then uh, the reasonable came in. It wasn't that effective. So the do so dogs should be aware that they have a slight uber advantage that they can dot push on. And they have the uber now, and uh, here we. But no, they actually don't go on it. They don't use it. Uh, and I guess they want sniper. To, yeah, they they want to do some gimmicky stuff with the. Uh, with Kratos, he's on the, the Quickie Bomb launcher, so I guess they're gonna do some stuff with bombing soldiers onto the point, and then they're just gonna clear the stickies using the Quickie Bomb launcher. That's uh, a pretty good strat, I'd say. Not as good as a, a dark push. <laughs> but well, <laughs> they lose Razor's Edge there, so that sniper's not, no longer gonna be a threat. There's no off classes for Reason, though, so Reason content to try and hold this. Both Ubers still up, and now actually there's a scout in from behind. What is, uh, I think that's Stark doing so far behind. He's on mid now. Or someone, one of the scouts, I'm not quite sure which one yeah, it is. Yeah, Uber's actually go down there. in the meantime. Yeah. Super takes down Captain, he gets dropped by Permzilla. But he hasn't uh, popped at all. And I think we're about to see a counter Uber. Nope, not even. You're just gonna hold on to that Uber and milk oh. it forever. I don't know, something's happening in lobby there. Yeah, there's some scouts trying to run behind. But I, I think they're, they're gonna make it. There's, there's a soldier on point, can they take it anyway? There's gonna be a creaky bomb launch of Kratos Kratos trying to come in. No. Calho and Kratos both getting shut down instantly there before they could even get half the time on the point. And now the rest of Dogs buttons away. I thought that was going to happen there. Calho on point, but Kratos still running that quick bomb launch and not able to launch uh, people away from the point quickly enough. Yeah. I don't think uh, the quick bomb launch was a problem. I think it was just that uh, Reason had quite a lot of players behind. They, they, they saw it and they anticipated it and they sent people back. Oh! What? Tomzilla drops! Huh? <laughs> Tonmus. Uh, solos in from Choke onto Permzilla, and then Calho just walks around the corner and shoots him in the face as he tries to get up the enemy elbow. There's going to be an actual soldier dropping down. Shadowburn tries to get on two skeets, gets the force up, but not the drop. So that's one drop at each for, for, for each medic so far. Apparently, we saw quite a lot of drops in the Epsi game earlier, so apparently, there's been a ton of drops tonight. It is the night of a thousand drops. Um, <laughs> we just see another one from Permzilla's there. As Reason tried to push in the middle, they fail, and now in it comes Dogs. They're looking to get aggressive straight away, trying to take down Cadus, but Zub is going to be the first to fall. And now with Kratos going down as well, it is not good for Dogs. Reason pushing in through this choke point, they're finding more frags. Three down now for Dogs, four down for Dogs, and Skeet and Thomas have made it away though. So Skeet will at yeah. least have that Uber, to, Uber up to defend. Yeah, the Uber is even, and they're, I think they're building, at least he has a scout with him. Uh, but they can't really contest second, there are just too many players down, but that was a very, very strong push from Reason. And they're slowly regaining their, their composure. You know, they were pushed all the way back to last with Uber Disadvantage, but they managed to claw their way back. And they're about to get a very easy second cap. And Kratos on another Sticky Bomb launcher, now he's using the Scottish Resistance. So there's just stickies everywhere, there's like 14 stickies you can put down with that thing. <laughs> and that can also destroy stickies, just as a side note. There's actually a soldier onto the medic now on last here. He gets shot down pretty well, but, but was that Skeet? Skeet, Skeet, Skeet again? dropped again. Second drop. <laughs> oh my god! Kids just like peeks in and uh, fires off a cannonball and drops Skeet. So yeah, you, we might get to a thousand drops, like you said. It's it's very very they're on point. Yeah, well, well, with Skis now respawning, going to be able to get some heals up, but Permzilla's got that 100%. Let's see if he is going to be able to find his way in, or if Razor's Edge is going to find him. I mean, if that that's the way the night's going, I think Razor's Edge might, might be able to get this. No, the Uber gets popped early, coming out of River Reason, already jumping super deep onto Kratos, trying to shut him down, but Kratos makes it into spawn. Skeet gives up his life, so his demo may survive. Skeet, of course, yeah. not the Uber, but Calho and Tom has Zoop. Everyone so many just now falling he, there. He has it's to surely use, like, all of his million stickies. No. Can't not enough. do it. Reason take the first round. And yes. we go forward into our second round here. It's going to be interesting to see what weapons our demo men are using. If there's any more strange things happening, no, both interest, both sticking with the normal sticky bomb launcher coming to middle, and I think they both are reaching about the same time. Maybe, K maybe Kate is having a slight advantage. It's going to be a sort of drop goes down. Super aggressive onto the demo very, very early. Doesn't quite get him though. But yeah, it's a scout for a soldier. That's usually favoring uh, the team that lost the soldier. But actually, so far the reason looks uh, very, very good. I'd say. There's only two remaining players alive. Uh, it's Razor Edge, and he's caught in. He's in the elbow right now, and they know where he is. <laughs> 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 fight from Gators. Just wall hacking his ass off. Just yep. predicts it. 
Dude, there's actually a soldier. That's Shadowburn. He was behind for like the whole fight. Came up, dropped down, and then dicked around on the enemy's second point there. He's now in attic, so there's not going to be any defense from dogs as they know that there's players all over second, even if the point wasn't being capped at the time. Um, yeah, so Reason wants to get looking to push last this time. No off classes so far for either team. Um, but dogs have put themselves up a forward hold, trying to hold the lobby area. Actually, a scout made it past. Uh create a sticky trap, so I think, yeah, that's just going to cause them to, to fall back. Uh, yeah, that was see, surprisingly easy. Stark, Stark just went a lower lower and then sort of stood around in lobby, but I don't think there was anyone on last. He could have just run straight to last, and I don't think he would have been seen there. Uh, no, no, Kratos saw him. Oh, okay. And Kratos well, went back. Stark goes down now, but uh, and, and Shadowburn go down as well, but they trade for Kratos, and that's not really a pick that you want to lose uh, if you're trying to push out of last. Both Ubers now getting popped out in lobby and it looks like Skeet is having the worst Uber. He's having to back himself away. Reason content to sit here though and wait for their respawns of Stark and Shadowburn. Now actually Dog's coming out once again. Carlo oh, is going to get destroyed. In the attic. That was a very nice shot. That's how you do a Roamer fight. I guess you want I want the buff and hit air shots. That, that's how you win. And sort of a sort of. But there's a sniper in main. He's peeking, that's uh, that's Starkey. He actually had a small peek onto the medic, but that was only for like a fraction of a second. But it looks like he's just gonna rotate around to Riverside, see if he can get any clear shot there. And uh, Docs are just going full gimmick here with pyros and heavies and probably even some weird sticky guns. No! Normal sticky guns can create us for once. Not weird, but actually, the sniper just peeks in so aggressively and nobody was even spamming him. They, they can't let him get that much space. That, that's very, very dangerous, especially when your medic is skied, who has a tendency to drop. <laughs> Actually, Calor gets rocked by a by a big body shot, and surprisingly, none of the snipers are using the the machina, which I'm pretty sure is allowed, and which does like so much body shot damage. It's squat 173 body shot damage if for a fully charged body shot. It's which something is... like that. Enough to kill pretty much everything except from the demo and soldiers. So not everything, but never mind. <laughs> it's just free damage, basically. Yeah. A lot better to do. There's going to be a sniper still peeking super Starting. aggressive. There's going to be a soldier jumping super aggressive. Shadowburn trying to get in. The Uber just get popped off though, so Shadowburn and Stark managing to team up. Not get the kill, but they get the force. And that is going to be huge for reason. They now just need to wait for Shadowburn to respawn. Dodge this dog's repush and then try and play super aggressively with their uber charge advantage. Um, they're sitting in big doors at the moment. There's going to be a soldier coming out insta gibbed by Cadis' little sticky trap there on the lower lower door. And now, I th dogs still look like they want to push out here, but this may be a dangerous situation for them. Yes, now, now yeah, they're still trying away. to suicide players. And oh, uh, yeah. Razor Z even goes down, so no pyro to, to mess up this push. Cadis is playing in water, but this is such a difficult position because he's almost the only player like Actually, Calho gets to spawn now. He's uh, doing a lot of damage, <laughs> but now it's only Kratos in the water against five <laughs> recent players. <laughs> you just have to sack the enemy one by one, and yeah, he can't quite... <laughs> quite he didn't even want to come out from water because there was a sniper just watching him. <laughs> so he just goes and hides deeper. Oh, what a play by Kratos yeah, there, that, but... That was pretty hopeless. Yeah, but now we come to our third middle, score being 2-0 to Reason. Kratos actually getting slightly beaten to mid there by Kratos. Kratos doing a little bit more, uh, hopefully a little bit more damage, but doesn't seem to be hitting any sticks at the moment. Now there's going to be a big bomb by Zub onto that point. Not really finding anything at the moment, and I think it looks like reason they actually lose uh, Stark early on, but now with Thomas going down and with Skeet getting picked up by Shadowburn there from a nice little big bomb from underneath. Shadowburn going to trade his life away for Calho as well in the process. Permzilla surviving on 17 HP. Can he just survive long enough? Yes, he can. Kratos going down. Calho, the only one left alive. He is going to look for Permzilla. Can he find anything? Doesn't even find him and gets insta-piped by Cadus when he jumps. So that is going to be another middle for reason as they push themselves into second point. And worth noting, I'd say, was uh, Permzilla actually getting a 2k. On that mid, he got he got two arrow kills and then survived with seven HP. It's a very very clutch, and that's gonna what a hero. Mess this up in a big uber advantage going into last. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we see actually we see a spy from Razor's Edge, so he's gonna be guess no, he's changed his mind. Never mind, he's gonna be switching onto the heavy. Probably just um, 
checking for any off classes there, we'll but there isn't going, any uh, in reason. Going riverside, and Kratos uh, is hiding in the water once again, so they can't pick off the demo here. And the pyro is actually stunting the river quite a bit. They haven't even gotten out of riverside, and they're, now they're just heavy, using the Tommy Sloth, just completely shutting them down, and pre preventing them from coming in. But Skeet is on 7 HP, he's so weak, and oh, there's so much time on the point. He gets wow. the Uber off! Oh my god, Skeet balls to the wall, plays there. It don't think it's gonna matter. Actually, it's gonna be a respawn in scout. Can anyone else respawn? Razor's Edge does finally go down, and Shadowburn comes in from behind and caps the point. Skeet, though, saved that round by a good 10 seconds by getting that Uber off. It is by surviving yeah. for forever, basically, and managing yeah, to get yeah. that Uber off. Doesn't work out. Still a nice play. HP. And then uh, Skeet was just like, "That's a great thing. I'll do the exact same thing." <laughs> <laughs> Get well, we see both medics taking leaves out of each other's books. They're both dropping, they're both surviving, and just about saving themselves to live. But we come up now to our fourth middle. Kate is actually in the, the face of uh, what? the Doxy. He got blasted up there and gets taken down by a scout in the demo. That was kind of unfortunate for him, and I think this is actually going to be enough. Yeah, yeah. Kate is just being so out of position. He's completely ruins that mid for a reason. And they're going to pressure out everyone else. Only two alive. That's, uh, that's the pocket. So he's uh, well protected here. Actually, a scout tries to go in aggressively onto Captain. See if they can uh, force it out and Uber maybe, or get the medic, or just overpower Captain. But that's not gonna work. But yeah, that whole mid was just decided by uh, by Cadus just getting blasted off into the face of the enemy team. <laughs> that's not where you want to be as a demo. Yeah, reason we're not re we're not ready for the aggressive push up their own side from Dogs there, but it it worked out really well for Dogs. Now we see a couple of off classes. Happy checking for off classes himself. I think, yeah, he's going to be running that spy, checking again, but nothing happening at the moment. Now, dogs, they're playing a little bit sort of passive. They're not taking too much ground in lobby now. They're starting to push forward and starting to look to see if they can find a force onto Permzilla. Perm is playing pretty damn close to the shutter. If he takes spam rockets, he could be in a bit of danger, but is going to be able to dodge anything coming his way for the moment. It looks like they don't really know what to do in the face of all this uh, spam coming up from Captain. Uh, like, uh, they, they've been buffing off Calho. Oh, and he actually just goes in main. Actually, he gets a really nice jump onto the medic. Scout underneath. He gets a lot of damage onto Permsilla. Gets him down to 90, but Permsilla holds onto it. So, actually, a pretty good uh, jump in from uh, Calho, considering the circumstances. But uh, Razor's Edge goes down as well. So, uh, they, they might push out here. Shadowburn did go down, but that's usually the guy you leave on last anyway. So, you can just spawn and stay on last anyway. And, <laughs> and Stark tries to be sneaky and get the demo pick, but... Kratos is not going to fall for that, once again. Do we have a spy play coming out? No, they're just checking. Yeah, that both teams, I think, are constantly checking for, like, off-classes and crit screes and things like that, but, it, you know, either of them are doing it, basically. But, actually, it is a spy play. It, what? Yeah, I swear, yeah, so he, he, I swear he switched it. to Sniper. I swear he switched to Sniper. Oh, well, never mind. I think he may have been spotted out there. He tries to come in through main. Yeah, they didn't see the damage. He's done. taken damage. But they, I think, uh, I think, uh, Happy Cool might have uh, spotted him being spy when he switched, and uh, <laughs> uh, they were just kind of blocking the stairs, and uh, is that uh, ran out of cloak for a little bit too, and they spot him and kill him. But uh, very good games in there from Happy Cool, just uh, going spy and checking to see the names that pop I up. Well, an aggressive little pyro play there coming out of Stark as he tried to get into lobby and get a reflect onto Skeege, but doesn't manage to find the reflect and backs himself away while setting people on fire as he leaves. You know, classic pyro stuff. Um, yeah, so once again we find ourselves stalemate, but reason they've got no reason to push. Um, once again, Hafid's running that, sp that spy. They're both de dedicated to checking it if the other team has off classes. They do not want to be surprised by it because yeah, a surprise so play can sniper, totally ruin right? things. Pardon? Yeah, and uh, Razor is a sniper. Yeah, but they oh, probably yeah, yeah. know about it. But he actually gets a pick onto Captain, and this should be a good time to push now. Uh, Docs don't have forever too. They they have to push and uh, get three rounds in eleven minutes. We're just good. Oh, Do a later, walk. Uber. Pyro oh, is a this class in this pyro game. Completely oh dear. shuts down the Uber. Wow. Doesn't oh even drop dear. down anything. Yeah, th this is why you kind of need uh, scouts in your Ubers too, because they can uh, kill the Pyro. Sort of regardless, and that, but that sort of was just helpless, getting bounced. Oh, that was sad to look at. That was that was a little depressing from uh, whichever soldier that was that tried to come in. I think it was Zub. Um, but yeah, now actually, frags are gonna be traded. Calho and Stark are gonna go out, but 
Reason still have a good, massive uber advantage, and they just looking to come out top. Soldier on a scout looking to peek out. Already spotted out the players. Now, actually, a soldier going to get super aggressive jumping forward. It's going to be happy cool getting the headshot there around the corner. Now the uber comes out. Kadis jumps in and takes down Raider's Edge at choke. Going to be looking to push forward as well. Coming out with a couple of seconds left on that uber. Trying to find skis, but Kadis is going to get instant meat shot by Thomas there as he comes around the corner. And now that Reason... was quite the overextension. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even have seconds. Alone. They didn't, yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they're going to have to give it up here, and now with a big Uber advantage from Skeets, this is Dogs' time. This is when the Dogs players can really get aggressive, and just go in as six. There's still no Cadis, so there's no chance of a Sticky Trap. They just need oh, to deal with this again. Pyro. Can they deal with the Pyro? <laughs> no, No, not really. Can't. Okay, they finally get him. They finally get him with the Sticky, but it, he did take up the entirety of the Uber. There's a scout in, uh, in the little hit secret area, but he gets taken down by a Heavy. And now it's uh, four against four, and that's a very difficult push. And Dolly Watch with the spawns coming in, and once and Ton Mazarin goes down. So I think we're about to see a, a counter push here. Uh, still has full Uber, and Captain actually goes super aggressive onto the medic. Medic is uh, just completely caught out up top. Great Uber there from the reason. Captain just soloing it perfectly. Almost takes down the demo here too and choke. At least yeah. pressuring it. Yeah, absolutely. Dogs not able to get themselves away in time and. Permzilla's um, Uber with Caps in there, cleaning them up really nicely, and now they get themselves second. Um, do you think they're going to push? I guess they are, as they're getting super yeah. aggressive through choke. In they come, trying to look for to find anyone who is still in the middle. Kratos, the only one here, but he's going to spam a few pipes and then walk himself away through choke. And uh, yeah, a, a free middle for reason here. As yeah, they just playing spawn. the main advantage super there really tight. There is a sniper from Razor's Edge in forward spawn, looking to see if he can get anyone through that big doors, but now he's going to be called out. Now there's going to be players onto him. He's going to get shut down by Shadowburn, who was already on the second point. And Reason players, they flood themselves into this second point through the big doors, but there's no one here because dogs have run away up to defend their last. Yeah, this is really a bad situation for dogs. Like, they gave up mid pretty much for free, and then they gave up second pretty much for free, and now there's an Uber against no Uber on last. There's a lot of stickies on the point, that's actually gonna slow reason down a lot. But a uh, nice pipe there from Kratos takes down a scout. Kratos gets two kills in return and he actually has a chance to hold everything off here. But no, they get overwhelmed and uh, four zero to reason is looking very very bleak for dogs. Well your prediction of a couple of rounds for dogs is not coming true so far. <laughs> we, we, we've it, still, it was... still got a bit of time left though. Yeah, my uh, my bold prediction of three rounds for dogs was uh, maybe that's all gonna happen on Viaduct and I'll look like a genius. But <laughs> ah, fair enough. Playing the long con, but we come up to our next middle. Starkey is gonna get piped away by Kratos. Kratos taking the early damage, but Calho jumping in on and four players gets instantly shut down. Now it's one for one. Both teams and an aggressive soldier bomb by Shadowburn getting forced away by the frags of uh, Razor's Edge. And now actually with both scouts going down for dogs, that's gonna be enough. Cadis is going to get picked up as they try to chase the uh, combo go away. Super, is this super enough? Super aggressively onto the demo. Actually, he's putting on so much pressure, almost getting uh, melee down. But uh, Kratos bought enough time for his medic to at least get out. So they'll have an Uber to defend last, maybe even second. Uh, there's not a whole lot of cap time on the middle point. So I, I think this is actually going to be a, a second hold for Docs, which is uh, a lot better than the last hold, in my opinion. Starks here already, Starks in on Skeet, Starks gets the pop onto Skeet, oh my god that is not what dogs wanted at all, they now find themselves with a massive uber disadvantage defending their second, if they lose too many players here, Reason can just roll themselves forward, especially if Reason can get in without using their uber, there is going to be a demo man in from behind, in fact a couple a nice players in from behind, this is a big on. play by dogs, yeah! A massive back cap happening. Can they manage to get the point? Doesn't look like they are. They're gonna are gonna lose Kratos, but they're buying enough time for Skeet to get himself a 40% Uber, and now maybe even higher. It it might have just saved them the round there. Yeah, I think this is like uh, they they sort of took a big chance and like quote unquote overextended quite a bit to make that play and just delay the hell out of a uh, reason. But I think it really paid off, and I think that is generally what the docs are failing on like uh, they get outplayed but they also fail to take any risks and uh, here's the pyro coming out uh, not quite shutting down the uber as much as uh, as we've seen them from reason's side but i think it still did quite a lot and it actually bought enough time for skis to buy or buy enough time for them to pop a, a counter uber and kratos doing so much damage in riverside i think yeah kratos even goes out and now there's a soldier in his face takes a lot of damage but finally kratos goes down 
But uh, an excellent hold from Dogs here. The Pyro just did buy barely enough time, and Skeet did a good job of staying alive and getting that Uber. Yeah, absolutely. And now Dogs find themselves on second point, trying to crush the players who are coming in through Choke. But they're not really getting the players off now. Now, now with the double soldiers looking to get aggressive onto that point. Dogs still don't have second point. This is not going to play. But in jumps a soldier up onto Permzilla. Taking him down really low. But does not manage to get the frag. That's Zub going down there. And now actually Skeet is going to get picked up. And Razor's Edge and Thomas. Everyone falling as they try to make their escape through Shutter. They're not going to be able to get back. And Kratos and Kaho, the only ones left alive on this last point. Against the marauding five players left alive for reason. The Uber's going to come in through main. Kratos gets insta shut down. And now Kalho is surely going to fall before he can get on the point. Does go for the melee on the start, but doesn't manage to get it. GG is called. That <laughs> so is 5-0. I thought yeah. he was going to get that melee there. That was so close. It's actually a really strong hold from Kalho, <laughs> all things considered. He did yeah. so much damage and bought time. But it was just not enough at all. Like, they were down three players, I think, and against an Uber. That, that's, a, that's a rough position to be in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, now we see some logs, hopefully. I'm going to put some in chat and in mumble. And we'll go have a look at those. I expect a dominating performance from the Reason players. Um, but we'll see how, what the logs say. Yeah, it looks uh, like that's pretty much what happened. Uh, once again, Kratos actually does quite a lot of work. If you look at the logs, like he, he did the the best on his team. And yeah, how no. many heals does he get? Well, not that many. He gives less than Kratos actually. So like Kratos has been strong, I think, and uh Kalo did decently as well. It's just the uh, the scouts had really bad games and just did the overall team. I don't know. Yeah. Composition sort of showing yeah. the weakness. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I, I've seen games where Tonmus absolutely, like, turns up to play and absolutely destroys things, but today, unfortunately, was not one of those games. Going 8-8 eight, eight and 15 with the lowest amount of damage in the game, not a good game from him, and Razor's Edge, uh, again, you know, he's he pretty rusty as well, I think. Um, Maybe, but this map Starkey was just actually... all about... Uh... Yeah, this map was all about the, the explosive classes. Like, none of the, the scouts did very well, actually. Like, Half Gold did the best with 19 and 9, but he still has pretty meat damage, and it's not, like, an impressive showing. I, I guess the most important yeah, well, stat here... It's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Per Perms Permzilla getting three deaths is pretty pretty impressive. Yeah, he had a uh, one-to-one KD. <laughs> three kills, three deaths. That's very good as medic. <laughs> Who has the most drops? It is, of course, Skeet. Two drops to uh, Primzilla's one. They all happen in like the first two minutes of the game too. It feels like it's just all at the same time. Yeah, the the, the earlier rounds seemed a little bit closer than the later rounds. I, I want to say. Yeah, I, I think it was round four where um, uh, Docs managed to claw their way all the way to Reasons Last with a uber advantage, but they didn't quite uh, capitalize on it. And I think. That's what uh, they've been doing wrong. Like they don't capitalize on the advantages quite enough. They're not willing enough to take risks, and then sort of the the team cohesion is just not as strong as reasons, and probably also the DM. So there, there's a lot of factors that they don't have going for them. But I think like being willing to take risks and uh, playing off of your advantages really well is something that they can definitely fix. And they need to do that on this map in order to have a chance against uh, Reason, because I think Reason is pretty strong on Viaduct. Do, do you actually know about this? I haven't played against them on Viaduct. Well, neither so, have I. Neither have I. Um, but no, I... I mean... We saw them play Viaduct a couple of times at I-55. That was, of course, a slightly different roster. But Captain Haffy... Uh, sorry, yeah, Captain Haffy and Kadis should be fairly strong on it, I want to say. Um... Shadowburn, of course, uh, a pretty, pretty good, pretty good soldier. So theoretically, could do some crazy, crazy stuff on Viaduct. Uh, what I want to see, though, what I want to see is the TLR strat. You know, not the don't get on the point strat. The 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 switching the demo to sniper strat. Oh right, yeah. I don't know if you saw that game because I, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I I did see. I saw the demo for uh, the Viaduct game. Um, it, it was something. 
Like, I don't know what indeed. her beat was doing. Like, he was literally ran away from the point. So I know, I know, he, he, he goes to get the ammo. If he doesn't get, he doesn't need the ammo, but he goes to get it anyway. Oh, yeah. It's classic plays. <laughs> but, yes, War was playing Sniper for a couple of rounds there, and I want to see if either of these teams are going to gonna try that, you know? Um, I doubt that Dogs will try it, because they've got two pretty good Snipers in... Razor's Edge, and I think Thomas is a pretty fairly decent sniper as well. Um, I don't think Cadis will be switching off the sniper either. To be fair, no. I, I guess I guess that's the really Cadis sniper. It. I've never seen it. I've never got the experience of that. Then that would again, be a first. You no, know, I guess I, it could happen. I've I've never seen the war sniper before, but you know, he pulled it out, so maybe Cadis will do the same. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. But yeah. You were saying you were saying actually you flagged up a point earlier on about um, dogs had like a thirty percent advantage and they didn't push off it even though they had second um, and you know not pushing off their advantages is just so key on uh, viaduct it's going to be really hard for them to gain control of the point if they do not push off their advantages and I th I think that I w I want to say it's going to be a three nil for reason but I also want dogs to at least get themselves around yeah I I really really doubt it. Um, if they get around, I, I think it either, it's either because they, they start taking risks and pushing off of the very small advantages. You know, because on Viaduct there's basically like three big advantages that you can take advantage of. There's Uber advantage, there's man advantage, and there's spawn advantage. And, you know, so you can like take an even fight, but if you don't have the point, you'll get better spawns. So the next wave should win the fight, if the, the fight is somewhat e even. All right, so... Like those are the three big advantages, but they're not always that apparent and that big, and you just kind of have to have some confidence and believe in yourself to actually make it work. And so far, from what I've seen with dogs, and just playing against dogs in, in earlier seasons at least, um, there was a lot of uh, passive play coming out of dogs. They, they're never taking risks. They always just do the slow play, and that might not uh, be the best thing on Viaduct. I think Viaduct is one of the worst maps for that kind of strategy. Oh, we'll see. Like Razor's Edge, if he goes sniper and just hits everything, he he should be warmed up. They could have a chance. And you know, I think uh, Viaduct is one of the more volatile maps where a single mistake can just cost you the map or a, a round. Uh, according to Happy Cool in chat, Lego are beating Epsi. Of course, that is the other game happening right now with Get a Whale and CX over on. Stream one, Lego versus Epsilon. So, well, if you're if you're not quite ready to wait for us to start, you want to go catch a little bit of TF2. Head on over there to catch a couple of minutes of the game, then come straight back to us because we're going to be seeing this second map just as soon as the teams are ready. Um, but yes, yeah, a triple build tonight. You know, it's a a busy busy night. It was going to be four, but luckily Animate and Serpents rescheduled to Tuesday, so uh, we don't have to put you through having to watch four games at the same time. That would be probably too crazy, especially because, you know, three of the games would probably be at uh, 21. Uh, at least uh, today, like, you know, there's three games on, but uh, Epsilon is doing a double header because they didn't play in week two. So they do a one at eight and then one at 21. That's uh, a lot more, I don't know, stomachable. You know, you can actually just keep track of what's going on much more precisely than if three games are going on, on all at the same time. So it, I don't think it's too bad tonight. I, I think it's uh, it's pretty cool, even if it's free games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, do you think that we are going to be seeing any forward holds out of either team? Because I mean, back at I-55, Froyo showed us their in almost seemingly impenetrable forward hold, which um, teams of Nerd Rage and Reason were just not able to push against. So. Do you think that uh, this will be anything we see from either team here, or do you think it's going to be the focus on snipers? I, I think we're going to see it out of uh, out of reason quite a lot, and just I I feel like it's sort of in in style at the moment. Like it's part of the meta game to do forward holds. Um, sometimes it's not, but at the very moment it it feels to me like a lot of teams are, are doing it. My team doesn't always play against prem team though, so. You know, I could be a bit inaccurate, but it feels like a lot of teams are doing it. So I'm, I'm going to put my uh, my money on the fact that we're going to see quite a few forward holes. I don't know if we're going to see them from dogs. I, I feel like uh, they would be more inclined to sit back and just have the, the scouts on the, the high ground trying to deny jumpers. But we'll, we'll see about that. 
I think the bigger question. Oh, is uh, Sine in uh, in spec? <laughs> oh, uh, the 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 mid game substitution serving out Razor's Edge for the Sine play. This I I I've got to agree with this. Got to agree with this. Yes, I was I was uh, criticizing the the choice to not run Sine on Viadog. You know, like the best map ever to just have a perma sniper. So it looks like they're they're calling in their perma sniper. You know, I I think Sine is a, like a really high level Highlander sniper, right? He is he also... is he is top prem Highlander sniper, yeah. Right. So they're they're bringing in the big Highlander sniper guns, and he's course, probably just gonna yeah. <laughs> in, in chat, Kadus mentioning, of course, this does mean that Kratos is benching his own brother. Razor's Edge is, is his brother. Um, really? A, a little bit of trivia, which I did actually know, but had completely forgotten until Kadus just reminded me in chat there. Um, so yeah, so so Razor's wow. Edge is going on the bench for Tsini. This is this is I think this this could give Dogs an edge though. I think with Tsini coming in, he I've I saw him before back in the uh, Challengers Cup, and he just played absolutely amazingly on Viaduct, absolutely decimated. Um, I think they were playing against Lego at the time. And they and you know they just could not handle him, and they are going to be running the perma sniper to middle, but no sniper coming out of reason so far. And we come up to our first middle as we have gone live. Both soldiers jumping super aggressively from reason, taking that right hand side, already getting in behind, trying to find Sini, trying to find that sniper, and just play super aggressively from behind. Kratos is actually going to be the first one to die as the soldiers from behind are finding him. And just things are happening all over the point. Perm is actually going to be going down though to an aggressive bomb by Zoom. And now things are happening. Cadus and Captain just combine together to get themselves four fraggers in the span of a second. That is going to be the first middle to Reason. And, well, you said it, if anyone was going to do it, it would be Reason, but no. Yeah, I don't think the they're going to do a forward hold when they don't have to? a medic. Like, that's uh, the pretty key component of a forward hold. Let's just look at it. But they're actually doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but it should be pretty easy to break because as soon as they take any damage, they're not going to be able to heal it up. Well, it's just the soldiers. It was just Captain and Shadowburn standing for on on like forward right. Yeah, and <laughs> Sandy gets his first kill. He actually gets jumped by a soldier, but uh, does a nice surf away. And but the soldiers are just for some reason just keep jumping behind and distracting. And even Cadus jumps in now, and they're just winning the fight through sheer DM and distraction and just spreading out the the ox fire. Kalo is one of the few people alive. He's so weak. He actually steals the medkit in front of Shadowburn and takes him down. <laughs> <laughs> Great job for him. But the, overall, the, the, the push fails. Primsilla is alive, and the uh, Reason just have the spawners and the point. So this was all very, very well played by Reason, I, I feel like. They, they were in a very tough spot, but uh, just by going behind them, they managed to pull out alive. But Kratos actually does a double sticky jump in. <laughs> against the medic. Yeah, actually, hits a pipe, and oh my god, there's a drop from Primsilla. Oh man, this is just a disaster. Now it's just a. Oh my <laughs> god, Captain just destroys Sine. So. I wow. thought I thought that was pretty pro from Sine to just surf that rocket away and into the air, but Captain just says, no, you are not allowed permission to land, and air shots him away. And I, it's not really a forward hold that Reason are doing. They're just holding their two soldiers just really aggressively forward. And actually, Hafikul is in a super aggressive position. He's going to be able to drop down on Skeet. Hits one shot, misses the second, gets shut down. And then insta headshot by Tsiny, who comes around the corner. That is going to be a two-man advantage for Dogs. Can they find anything else? There's going to be a soldier jumping in aggressively onto the players. That is Shadowburn. Oh, no, that's Captain airplay. getting air shot. Sorry. Jesus Christ, things are happening all over the place. Yeah, and uh, Cadus comes in, he wants the medic, he actually gets the medic force, so great job by him, but this is still, no, this gives uh, Primzilla quite a big advantage, so I think we're about to see uh, pretty much a dry push, we're just going to wait for spawners, get buffs, and then they're just going to do a dry push, and then just hope that dogs will retreat. Oh my anymore. god, Shadowburn jumps over the arrow from uh, <laughs> from Skeets there, if he, if he gets hit by that, he dies, and doesn't manage to pick up the health cat, but by some matrix... Psychic Force manages to jump at just the right second. Tonmus goes down there, and now yeah, I look, think Dogs are given the point up. Out. Dogs are just being so passive here, they just let them get the point for free. Uh, it feels kind of bad, because Pemzilla didn't have Uber the entire way there, and he only just got it once they capped the point. So they could have like gotten a med kill out of that and retreat their own medic out. You know, if you're going to retreat, you might as well do a suicide. But they just didn't do that. But now... Oh, wow. Who forced that Uber? Was that Kratos? I jumped in? I think so. 
Okay, he like he like went forward right. and then jumped himself away. So I guess he must have hit a pipe on the Planzella. Um, There's another soldier fight. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, Skeets uh, absorbs the, that rocket with his face, so the soldier survives just fine. And now, as the full Uber events coming Planzella in, Planzella goes down, and the Uber Oops. gets popped off. And now, just players are falling all over the place for a reason. Only Cadus and Hafikul left alive. And that is a respawn from Cadus. Hafi is going back to spawn though as well so now we see dogs they're holding on point they don't want to push too far forward they know they've got a sniper up to respawn in a couple of seconds um so they're not looking to get too aggressive zoob actually running scout here um Ooh, i've just noticed this yeah i don't know how long he's been doing it <laughs> probably for some time to be honest and i just haven't been looking at my plugins yeah this is a, a pretty normal uh, strat when you have a perma sniper you just have two scouts because scouts are just so dominant on this map but uh, he's not just running and taking the, the DM fight. They, they've taken down the Medic, but that just means they have less uh, combat classes. And Kaden is just getting rushed down by two scouts. That's such a difficult fight. And actually, Soup is onto the Medic at spawn. Pramsilla survived 20 HP. Very, very close for Soup to do a big play. This leaves Pramsilla with a very big Uber advantage. And I think they're just going to play really, really passive until they get the Uber. And then they're just going to all just Uber in and take the point. And there's only four seconds on the clock. So this is a very, very tense situation for dogs. It's very uncomfortable because they can't really let reason cap. And Kratos gets taken down very, very soon, so no stickies on the point either. Now there's just all this time coming onto the point. This heavy needs to get his ass onto the point. We can't let them cap. They are letting them cap though. Now they have one second to get on the point. Um, they don't. It's, no, it's not going to be enough there. They just... I. With Kratos going down there so early, I just I just think they lost all hope in holding that. Um, the heavy was nowhere near to be able to get onto the point, but now they run once again this perma sniper. I doubt we'll see Tini switching off for the whole for the for the rest of the game. To be honest with you, um, but yeah, we come into our second round here for Viaduct, and things are going fairly well. Shadowburn takes a headshot in midair as he tries to make a skip jump, but Skeeds goes down anyway to a solo bomb from Captain there, and now players are getting Calder dragged all over the place. Big shot onto a scout and I think like there's just been done so much damage already I, I think Docs could actually take this Captain is behind actually manages to take down uh, the sniper a scout takes down from Scylla and this is just a very very scrappy fight very very few pe people alive but it looks like uh, dogs are just kind of too far back to be able to stop the cap and uh, we even saw Happy Cool run off the point a little bit there to get some better spawns for his team it's a nice little touch yeah, Happy, he tries, Happy tries to go aggressive into the combo for Stelks, but they're not really going to be able to get, he's not able to get anything and just goes down. Actually, this is, should be a free point for Dogs here. No one looks like they really want to get aggressive. Captain is going to jump in, tries to get onto Skeet, is not going to be able to get him, but takes Kratos as well. Uh, Kate just comes in and uh, takes down Skeet. Yeah, and uh, now just frags are happening all over the place. Again, really scrappy fights. I think that is the entire game all over. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god. god, what a nice shot. That was sick by Tini. <laughs> oh, he didn't even like need that to do so it. Unnecessary. Shadowburn had like 2 HP as well. He did not need yeah. to headshot him there. Oh well. But yeah, it was so still cool. The reason they find themselves faced with a point which is really no one to defend it. Now there's players appearing and Tini up on the high ground. So they're a little bit reluctant to push themselves forward. Now they're just going to hide behind the rock. Half Eagle's actually going to get picked off by Tini from behind. Tini surfing away from a jump from soldiers but reason half the point the clock is ticking down it's up to dogs to push forward but now with two three players down should nice i say shot from again he's really yeah. uh, warming up you're getting a ton of picks and he's getting uh, some good views here and actually just the threat of the sniper plus some players down for the reason just gonna make them back off even though they have the superior uber advantage and this is going to be very very difficult for them to actually make use of this uber advantage you know they have they had, I think, 30% advantage, but they were very far away. But here, here comes the Uber. Cadiz actually beats his first jump, and the, the counter Uber comes in. Cadiz is onto the sniper way behind lines. Actually, gets a pick, and uh, hits a nice pipe as well. He's still alive. How is Cadiz alive? He jumped there is... way behind. Wow! What? Everybody jumped in so aggressively for reason. Like there was, there was the dogs combo on point, and there was four reason players behind them trying to clean up their backline. Yeah. Two of them managed, two of them go down, but two of them managed to get out and link back up with their medic. Now they've got heals. Kratos is going to be going down. The scouts are getting aggressive from Zoob and Tonmas trying to look in, trying to see if they can find anyone, but they're not really getting it. They are managing to get the point, but now in comes the damage. Happy Cool finding himself two frags on Skeet, Calho, and Tonmas. So that is going to be a nice little triple kill for him.
And he's onto the sniper as well. Yeah. Can he get headshot again? No. Actually, it takes a uh, damn. That's a 4K for, for nice. him. And uh, Starky came, comes in and uh, just cleans up the demo as well. But Don't. now the medic is alive, and this is the the spawn advantage that I was talking about. You know, I think dogs should just be pushing here. They're waiting quite a long time, but they, you know, they know they have better spawns. They're gonna spawn earlier than reason, but they're just sort of slow to make a move, and they have so much time on the point, so they just need to stand on the point for a little bit and then just walk back and have the superior spawns. But they decide reason, not to. Reason already had six there when when they when dogs finally make an appearance onto point. They're not even managing to get this point yet, which is not really the play they want. Now they finally get it, but they trade Tonmas's life for it, and now he's got a massive long respawn. Reason know that they can get super aggressive across point, trying to find as many frags as possible. Tini and Zub are going to be next to four, so that is three down, and everyone just collapses on uh, dogs. They saw some horrible, horrible things there as they just get instantly decimated by the Reason push from across point, and now Reason. Now they're doing a forward hold. You know, you said you said they were going to do it, and you were right. Zini tries to find a way forward, isn't going to be able to do it, and this is going to be so hard to break yeah, the forward going hold after with main. the sniper. They, they're just going for the medic uh, force here. <laughs> they even have a pyro, but so far they are not even come close to popping Permzilla. But their medic is still completely safe in spawn. Well, I say he is in safe in spawn. He, he got out with like 60 HP. <laughs> But they're still building Uber. They, they can still do a second suicide if they wanted to. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they do. But there's also only 30 seconds left. So it's getting pretty... Actually, Cadence gets overwhelmed. They, they were running the pyro to deflect the stickies and rockets. And they actually kind of worked out. And they oh, deflect. Burn. Yeah. He's down. His tunnel sounds like a pyro killing spree. But man, <laughs> Stug is just cleaning up everything. <laughs> like I think that was a nine kill streak so far, just staying alive, never dying. That was I think he I think he cleaned up every single kill there basically, except from that last one that Captain finds Calho. But yeah, dog uh, reason find themselves a the second round, uh, looking a little bit a little bit more comfortable from that for them that time. But uh, you know, Cini started hitting some shots there. If he can go absolutely ham, then dogs have themselves a chance to pick up a round here. But let's see how it turns out for this third middle. Once again, Shadowburn going super deep in from behind. Hasn't even been called oh, out. Going to take down Calho instantly. And that is not what dogs want themselves. Now they're all sort of trapped up on their cliff. And there's actually going to be a heavy medic up there for them to defend. Yeah, they're so immobile. The captain yeah. is behind him as well. And Shadowburn is behind as well. And Cadence is behind. And the scout. Like, ouch. everyone's behind. Ouch. That's all I've got to say to that is ouch. That was... That was clinical for a reason. They just wrapped yeah, that around was brutal. Him and here comes and the forward squeezed. hold. And there's no Uber in sight at all. And it's going to be so hard for dogs to try and break this with a perma sniper. Um, they're trying to sort of peek towards that left hand side. Thomas is going to go, get caught out in main, trying to be the distraction. And now they come in, but Captain just hitting shots after shots. The Uber does get forced out of everyone. But Skeej is. No, he he manages to make it back. I think that was spawn. a good play. Yeah. It, it looked no, really dumb, right? It did, it did. Yeah, because everyone just ran into these soldiers that were just standing there. But it actually just absorbed enough attention and damage that eventually someone came through and managed to, to hit Permsilla with a nice big rocket, forcing him to pop. And now they're running a, a pyro to see if they can make their way out. <laughs> Captain actually gets reflected and gets taken down. So the horde hole has been broken. That was a really nice job by uh, Ton Master Pyro here. Um, that's pretty rare you see, uh, see that. Usually it doesn't work that well. But Dogs is just gonna push all the way forward and take point. So I'm kind of surprised by this. Uh, Stark is behind, causing trouble. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Wow, that should not have happened, but it did. That's a that's a good player for you. And yep. <laughs> Kate just jumps in as well. I, get, I think this is just a yeah a suicide wave at this point. From uh, is way back at their own forward spawn. That uh, was spawn. in blue spawn. It, it's, it's what? How did he even get there? I don't even know. But he was in blue spawn, forcing players to go back and chase him. And now dogs find themselves 5v almost 6 on this middle point. But I guess, you know, they've got a massive disadvantage. So dogs are going to be looking to try and get the force off as soon as possible onto Permzilla. But the deny! And he needs to, uh, to hit, hit the medic. He doesn't. But this is actually pretty good for dogs. Like, they haven't lost anyone yet. Uh, and they even get a pick. So... You know, even though we're not going to cap this point, I think Docs are just going to push straight back into them. You know, this is 
where they should use this man advantage. You know, they have one man advantage and the spawn advantage, so they should just go in. It's and cool. Kidus actually jumps behind, causing uh, some, some chaos, but that's pretty much just a free pick. There's also a scout behind. Oh, well, that's the sword behind Soup. <laughs> actually, he ends up dying. Uh, I don't know, Riesel are just buying so much time by jumping people behind. And Shadowburn is not dead somehow? Okay, finally died. But Captain now onto the medic. I think they're finally going to get the. <laughs> no! <laughs> What? <laughs> Skeet survives and holds oh the Oh my god. He, if anyone should be afraid of dropping, it should be Skeet, but he holds it. That's uh, that's very, very ballsy. And uh, there's even a nice little air pipe from, from Kratos. That must have been a good sort of 30 seconds there that Reason, say, that Reason knocked off their timer by just constantly jumping players in behind. That's just such a ballsy play that just completely works out for them. Yes, they do end up giving up the point, but Permzilla is now on 75%. And yeah, they were going to lose point get in, anyway. Yeah. So definitely a good move. Uh, Captain jumps in onto the medic, gets completely shot down by the entire <laughs> dogs team. Usually you don't want to jump in alone like that, you want to do it with the help of your team. Now there's even a scout caught behind that Stark gets taken down by also the entire team. So that was that was a pretty bad suicide wave right there. <laughs> so, even, so right after doing a really nice play, they kind of uh, beat it by doing a, a dumb play that's going to delay their push. Yeah, Cadis is going to take a charge body shot there over in main as he tries to find his way in, but nothing really happening, and then takes an arrow from his teammate. Uh, actually, Cadis is going to try to cross over onto Cliff, gets shot down by Tsini with a nice little headshot there, and now there's four players from Reason over on that low side. They're trying to get an aggressive, but in comes the bomb. Captain trying to find Skeet is going to get the force. Does get a headshot for his troubles, though, but gets exactly what he wanted out of it. And actually, Tsini hits Stark as well, so that is a suicide wave there. Perms yeah. surviving back into last. That's how you do it. You get the force off. You even get a, you even get a frag onto Calho, and you just go with six. This is the strap from Reason here. Yeah, look at the the heals on Reason. They're so good. You know, this is a really really nice position for them to be in. <laughs> Case actually just walks through a sticky trap there. No, no biggie. And right now, Reason are just. They, I think they've been a little too passive. Now they pop the Uber and go super aggressively. And Kate is actually onto the medic here. I think he's gonna get the medic, actually, with the help of the soldier. What? No, they oh my god. Skeet? Okay, he finally. <laughs> <laughs> he surfs his way into Stark's waiting scout again. But uh, he survived for a lot longer than he should have done there. But now there's players being cleaned up uh, by both sides. But Reason have the point. They have their combo on point. Kratos is surely going to go down here. Yes, Hafiko picks that up. And now actually there's a soldier coming in. It's going to be Calho trying to get some rockets onto Permzilla. Hits the first one, but doesn't doesn't able to get a second one off in time. Jesus Christ, my English is bad. You don't English well. Don't English well. It's not no, as true. good, I guess. That's more incorrect. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, dogs, they find themselves once again trying to push this point. They've got only 14 seconds left on their own clock, so if they can get this, they have a good chance of uh, holding Reason off if they can get some good shots from Tsini. This could be their round to take, but there's going to be a soldier in from a scout in behind. Back They've in this all so the way again. Room. There's no pressure on him. He's just getting three shot after three shot. Now he's looking at the medic, almost gets him. Uh, <laughs> And now we finally see some action coming up from uh, from Reason. They actually have a scout onto a ski. Ski just on 93% and goes down. Oh, tragedy. Man, Dogs they were so close, but now it's just all gonna just fizzle out. I <laughs> they, think they suicide I some people. Yeah. I think that was Stark, and he 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 went he went from low all the way around through the enemy spawn up onto Cliff. Finally, gets all the way back to low again and picks up Tsini. So he's just going all the way around the houses to finally win his team that round but reason they win this map 3-0 first map was of course 5-0 so they don't even drop a round to dogs here dogs uh, they out of four maps find themselves one round not a good evening for them but going up against the two strongest teams in prem was there any other result uh, I, I guess not I, I guess we both knew this would, would probably be uh, a yeah. pretty uh, bad game but I will say, uh, like, uh, you know, Docs were the only team with zero points after this round. So Docs is uh, definitely contending for the worst team in Brem at the moment. But Reason was at the top of the scoreboard with 12 points, along with three other teams, plus technically Epsilon. Um, so they were like one of the four best teams, right? So that's not too certain. Too certain. And we don't really know how good this uh, Reason roster is. You know, there's been some shakeups, and we don't know how much they've been practicing and all that. You know, a new season, a new day. 
and you know it can change things but as it turns out it didn't change that much they're, they're still very good and dogs are struggling absolutely um i believe logs have been posted so let's have a quick look at those um starkey getting himself 32 frags um over the next highest of half equals 18 so starkey putting up some big numbers on this map also top damaging over his demo man and explosive classes so i i i want to say stark did well was that an understatement i don't think so and this is like viaduct is just such a good map for scouts especially if you have a team that does a good job of uh, doing damage and distracting and making the opposing team just turn your, the, their backs on you, right? And that's, uh, I think, you know, Stargate played really, really well, but there's also the, just the fact that Captain Cadiz and Shadowbrand were so good at just jumping behind and taking up so much attention all the time that he could just run in from, from the front and do a ton of damage. And and the same with Happy Cool. Like, Happy Cool had a less of a pronounced good game, but he also had a really good game, like 18 and 9. That's great. So you can't really point fingers, you know. And if you look at the soldiers, they're, they're twelve and twelve and eleven, thirteen and, and fourteen, you know. Even though the team won by quite a lot, so that should just tell you that the soldiers played sort of, I don't know, the battering ram or the distractions. You know, they bombed in, and then the rest of the team cleaned up really, really well. Yeah, no, no, I get, I get exactly what you're saying. I, I also want to point out just to just to shit talk captain a bit, um, because I can. Um, him and Shadowburn had exactly the same number of assists. He had one more frag than Shadowburn, and he had three more deaths and about 300 more damage than Shadowburn. But he also got 21% more heals. Uh, no, sorry, what am I saying? 16% um, more heals than Shadowburn did. So you know, Captain, step it up. You know, you get you you getting outplayed by your Roma here. Yeah, that's just embarrassing, Captain. Jesus Christ. Not even trying. Not even trying. Oh, are we doing? Are we doing interviews? I guess we are. I I've asked them. I get. Oh yes, Cadus has joined the channel. Cadus, welcome. Hey, yeah. Thanks. Um, obviously, congratulations on your eight nil victory. Thank you. It was a fun game. Yeah. Were you yeah. worried at any point? Like, uh, <laughs> what was your mindset going into this match? Did Did you expect it to be closer than it was, or did you kind of think that the uh, dogs weren't as, as strong this season? Uh, we weren't really worried about losing or anything. I thought they'd get a couple of rounds on Gully. Um, I thought Viaduct would be an easy 3-0 until they got Saini, and then we had to like kind of reconsider how we'd play the map. Uh, I'm not sure like what that was about. If that was just like a strategy thing to bring in the big sniper on Viaduct, but we had to kind of we had to adjust things for that. It went so what well. did you adjust? What did you change? Well, we just have to. You just have to constantly think about the sniper. Basically, it it changes like. You just can't. You can't. You aren't free on the map anymore. You have to be really careful, like where you choose to go and what routes you choose, and you have to wait for people to get behind before you can push. Because I mean, going into the game, we just figured we could out deathmatch them, you know. But when they have a sniper, you can't just walk in and fight them. You have to be a bit more intelligent about it. Right. You guys definitely did a great job of uh, jumping behind all the time. I don't know how many times we saw what I thought so was you many. just so yeah, many, <laughs> just overextending. But then I realized, wait, you're not overextending because the entire enemy, like. Your entire team was just behind them. <laughs> yeah, I think it went Is a bit better. Normal? Not really. That's not really how we normally play the map. Like, like in the early rounds, it worked really well. Like we could just jump them and like kill them really easily. I think later in the game they adapted to it a bit better. Um, but like all the same, like because they because they have a sniper, it's like once you're in their in their ground, it's a lot harder for him to do anything. Yeah, I w I I want to I, I want to give props to Cini. Actually, he did play a really pretty good game considering you guys were basically focusing him, him a lot of the time um doesn't work out in the end though but there was a couple of chances for him to go big and some really nice shots from him as well um but you guys looked really really strong here obviously you're playing with shadow burn as a merc instead of rising um but that's not necessarily a downgrade as i think i said earlier on no, um, pretty different players but they're probably equally good fair yeah. enough fair enough so uh your opponents next week are Lego, and Lego is kind of on a hot streak. Do you, are you kind of are you afraid of Lego in any way? Like, do you expect to lose, lose on that maybe? Um, I'm not really too concerned. I mean, we, I don't think we've Pam, have we played them other than today. Uh, no, that was first time. I don't think we've really played them so far. We kind of played them today, but uh, 
it's like the the server crashed in a PCW and it was all disjointed and stuff. Uh, wasn't like super impressed by them, but I mean they're definitely like a, a much more like improved team than the Legos of old. So it'll be one of the the more serious games this season. But I'm pretty confident still. Um, well, I mean, I, I, are you sure you're confident? I don't know if you've watched any of Stream One, but Epsilon Golden capped out Gullywash three two versus Lego, and they're having a not not easy time of it on Viaduct here. So Lego looking pretty strong here. Maybe you should uh, try and get a couple more scrims against them. Um, yeah, so looking forward, as you say, you guys are now, I think, pretty much sitting the top of, um, will be the top of Prem with 18 points here. Um, are you worried at all that you are going to give that position up to anyone? Especially with Epsilon dropping at least one point this week. Uh, don't know really, like, we've, we've still only played Epsilon like a handful of times, and it's always a bit weird playing them. I think it's just going to come down to that game, though, pretty much. I mean, TLR will be interesting now as well, because they've changed their roster, and it's probably going to be stronger than before, but I think it'll probably come down to the EPSI game at the end of the day. I mean, I don't know when we play TLR, like if we play TLR before or after EPSI, but... I think like, it's after LEGO before EPSI. Yeah, so like our next three weeks of games, basically, I guess, are just the important ones. I think it'll come down to the EPSI one, though, unless something goes weird before then. But I guess now we only have to take a map from EPSI, if we don't drop points elsewhere, we just need a map and we will be first, I guess. So that's nice. Yeah. But is that is that important to you in any way, or do you feel like uh, there's no other team than Epsi that are even? Able well, like to I say, like TL TLR is a bit of an unknown now because they're gonna. I think they're gonna be stronger than they were before. Because I think like they weren't, even though they weren't playing well, I think their main problem was just morale, and they got rid of one of the main like kind of depressed players and and brought in someone who's just gonna be a bit more peppy. So. I think they'll probably improve just because of that. Um, yeah, I think I think it will come down to Epsi and like if we played Epsi in a best of three, like normally I'd expect that to go to three maps. So if we're playing two maps, you know, naturally you'd assume that goes one one. And since we we didn't, hopefully we're not going to drop a point to anyone else. That gives us an advantage in a way. But I mean, it's going to come down to the playoffs anyway. It doesn't really matter if we're first or second. Does it though? Because I mean, obviously, if you're not first, then you have to play two best of threes in a row. Um, which surely going to be draining for you guys. I'm, yeah, I'm guessing you'd prefer to be first. It would be draining, but I mean, we did it. We did it last time as well. Like we played Nerd Rage first, and then played TLR, and we were like, because you get that win. Like if you're in the final, coming from the semi, you already have like that hype in your system, like the win, the confidence. So you don't really have that like the shaky first five or ten minutes that sometimes you have in big games. You kind of get that out of the way within the semi, so it can be an advantage as well. I personally prefer to play first because it's always pretty tough to get a warm up as well. Because by then, like you know, not, not many teams are playing anymore, and it can be difficult even to get warmed up for that for the final. So it doesn't it doesn't really matter too much. You just prepare for whatever situation you have, I guess. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Permcilla, you haven't said much. Um, how long have you been playing medic? I remember you as being not a medic main. Uh, well, I guess this is like the first time, uh, like actually maining medic. But like, I play like every class on and off for like the whole time I played TF2 pretty much, which is what like five years. So I have played a lot of Medic and like, I think I played a season in like Div 3 like two years ago or something, but I've just played a lot of double mixes, a lot of mixes, a lot of murking and that sort of thing, but this is my first proper time. Would you say that Medic is your best class or or are you still at work in progress? Uh, I think it probably is, but like I think that's half, half because uh, I think I've got worse at the other classes in the last like six months or so, which is... Like, because uh, I've been in university, I haven't played much in the last year or two. So I think I've got, like, worse at the other classes, and naturally, like, Medic, you don't get as rusty as quickly. So I think it, it probably is my best class now. Have but, you been screwed over by any of the, the terrible unlocks that you're allowed yet? Uh, not that I can think of. I don't think so. The loose cannon is sort of annoying, but none, none of them, like, were on a ban, even if you get, like, killed by one, you know? Like, it's just part of the game. I don't think any weapon like deserves a ban at the moment. All right. I know. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's about it. I I can't think of any more good questions to ask. Uh, just congratulations on your win, guys. Thanks. Thank you. And good luck next week. I'm sure that's going to be a very very good game. I'm definitely going to tune in. I hope so. Um, All right. 
Do you have any shout outs before we go? Uh, shout out to Reason Gaming. Still waiting on those keyboards, gang. <laughs> but I trust you. I believe in the reason. Mm. Ramzor, got anything to say? Uh, I think Skeech might have something to say. Oh, Skeech's here. Man, well, maybe not. He's maybe shout not out to big sponsor TF2Pickup.net. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so we're going on here. Screw these uh, shout outs. Uh, let's talk to Skeech. <laughs> okay, hi. Yeah, hi. Sorry, man, I didn't see you. It's okay. Uh, I'm very very sorry. So so how was that game from from your guys' perspective? Uh, it looked pretty one sided from where we were sitting. Yeah. How, how was the game for you? I don't know. I guess uh, the first official drained too much uh, like morale or energy. So halfway through this game, uh, people kind of started giving up. Uh, right. that, that's what I could uh, say. And yeah, well, obviously Reason is a better team, so not much more to add. All right. How about uh, your decision to, to, to cut Razor's Edge for, uh, for Sine on Viaduct? Do you, do you think that's going to cause uh, trouble against the, the Kratos brothers? <laughs> no, 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 this was like uh, like Kratos was talking about this uh, ages ago, like weeks ago. It was it was a plan all along. It wasn't like a last minute decision. Oh, okay, okay. So so that was like part of the plan. Yeah, yeah, you see uh, how epically it worked. Oh, that was a good plan, I thought. Like It was definitely a lot harder than I think it would have been yeah, yeah, without yeah. Saini. He got some of the rounds the... were quite close as well. Yeah, it was actually, yeah, like the same as with our Epsilon game, like uh, a lot of parts of the game were way closer than the score might uh, reflect. Indeed. I, I think uh, I, I saw some of the Epsilon game and like Kali was, was like pretty slow. Like a lot of your maps seem slow. Yeah. Um, you seem like you're a very passive team that like to play on safe advantages and that kind of stuff. Is that is that correct? Uh, it's hard for me to say I'm a medic, I'm not main calling, uh, I don't know what to, like, for me it feels like, uh, like we're like, uh, how do you call it, like split personality, like some, sometimes we want to fix, because we realize that we're slow and we want to fix that, so then our flank wants to initiate or Zoop wants to initiate and says the scout should stay with me, but then the rest of the team is, is not doing that, so basically we're not in sync, so... When half of the team is trying to go aggressive, then the other half isn't. It's part uh, team play, it's part experience, I guess, because not everybody is as experienced on the team. And it's uh, part comms as well. And calls. Uh, I mean main calls. Right. So so definitely a lot of things to work on. Yeah. You guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who are you guys playing next week? Uh, um, I have no idea, actually. Oh, well, well I'll check. I just show you, up then. and play. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're you're playing against Animate. That should that should be a pretty good game, right? Like, yeah, do, do, yeah, do you think yeah, you yeah. can take Animate? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think in PCWs they took most of the games against us, like by by a small amount. I don't know. So, but uh, yeah, I think we're we've been playing way better the past few days. Uh, so yeah, we can definitely take that. All right. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, and now I think we can go to to shoutouts. Uh, so, so Skeet, do, do you have anything you want to shout out? Yeah, big sponsors, tf2pickup.net. I guess we're sponsored by Whitelist. I have no idea. Uh, and uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, everyone. Oh, and shout out to Jeroen. All right. Uh, from Silla, do you have any shout outs? Uh, shout out to Shadowburn for working. That's it. All right. Ryushi, do you have anything last you want to say? I want to sneeze, but actually, no, I want to shout out my team, my boys, and anyone from Colleen Mumble who is probably playing Dota right now instead of watching me cast. So, yeah. All right. I'll shout out uh, Onkaya for doing a great job uh, broadcasting here, moving the camera. And then I want to shout out to all the people that helped me collect ticks. That's Salatin, REM, Tavi, Mars, Mirlite. These guys all helped me uh, review. VODs from uh, i55, and not only have we finished reviewing everything where we have ticks, but we did that like a month ago. So now it's just up to uh, Kaneko to actually make a video. So get on it. 
Yeah, I annoy him. And on that bombshell, we shall end. <laughs>